opening with the queen's pawn controls the center and usually leads to a more positional development of the pieces. d5 establishes a presence in the center, controls the e4 square, and opens up the light squared bishop. The queen's gambit offers up a wing pawn to attack the center and distract black from the e4 square. In the Slav defense, c6 supports the d5 pawn. Nf3 controls the e5 square and protects the d4 pawn. Nf6 develops the knight toward the center, adds support to the d5 pawn, and controls the e4 square. e3 supports the d4 pawn and allows the light squared bishop and queen to develop. A6 controls the b5 square and prepares a potential b5 pawn push. Nc3 develops the knight toward the center, attacks the d5 pawn and controls the e4 square. b5 takes space on the queen side and attacks the c4 pawn. This moves the pawn to safety. The bishop is ready to be developed to an active square. This fianchettos the bishop by placing it on a powerful diagonal. It is the last book move. This allows the opponent to reveal an attack on a knight. It is an inaccuracy. This ignores an opportunity to reveal an attack on a knight. It is an inaccuracy. Right on target. It is best. This offers an equal trade of pieces. It is good. One of the best moves. It is excellent. That's what I would have recommended. It is best. This is the strongest option. It is best. That's not a mistake, but it's not the best move either. It is good. This activates a bishop by developing it off of its starting square. It is best. This allows the knight to control more squares. It is best. Very precise. It is best. Right on target. It is best. This activates a queen by developing it off of its starting square. It is excellent. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. The opening was balanced. That was an incredible middle game by both players.